What's up? It's Sadiq Boxing. Like and subscribe. 95% of you are not subscribed. If you like and subscribe, you will greatly support the channel. Thank you. So, many people have started to extremely overrate Canelo Alvarez in his resume. Canelo Alvarez is now being rated as an all-time great who has a resume in many people's eyes on the level of Marvin Hagler, Tommy Harns, and Sugar Ryan Leonard. And I do not see where this comes from. Let's break down the man's resume. We'll start first when he just won the title, and we'll come to today when he just beat Anthony Yildirim. So Canelo Alvarez's background story is, he was born July 18, 1990, from Guadalajara, Mexico. He's listed at 5'9", I highly doubt that. He was more like 5'6", 5'7". And he's a red-headed white Mexican. Now let's get into his resume. Uh, Canelo Alvarez fought for the vacant WBC light middleweight title against a British fighter who many of you only know because he's a, a, a sibling to another all-time great British fighter, Ricky Hatton. The fighter that Canelo beat was not Ricky Hatton, though. He beat Matthew Hatton. Over a 12 round decision. Canelo beat Matthew Hand over 12 rounds and picked up the vacant WBC title. Then he went on to face another unheralded UK fighter named Ryan Rhodes down in Mexico, where he dropped Ryan Rhodes in round four and then stopped him over 12 rounds. Okay, you know, he's still, he just became a champion. We can give him a break so far for this horrible opposition. Then he fought truly a guy who should be two weights below the light middleweight division, Alfonso Gomez, and he beat him over six rounds. Then, so, then now he fought his most notable name yet to date, Puerto Rican Kermit Clinton. Look, first of all, Clinton was a Walter White in his peak. Second of all, He's three, four years past his best at this point. But nevertheless, Canelo got the job done. And he stopped Clinton over five rounds. Now where he fights his first quote-unquote superstar. in Shane Mosley. Shane Mosley at this time was coming off, I think, two years he hasn't won a fight. Because he lost to Floyd Mayweather. Like he got dominated. But other than round two, he lost every... Second, I guess Floyd Mayweather. Then he got a draw against Sergey Amora, which should have been realistically a win for Sergey Amora. And then he got dominated over a guy who started out at flyweight named Manny Pacquiao. He got dominated and dropped. And Shane Mosley was looking slow. He was looking out of it. We knew that Shane Mosley was going to get stopped fighting Canelo Alvarez. And it was going to be a good... A very good name to add to Canelo Alvarez's resume. But you know what? He didn't stop Mosley. But he basically pitched a shout out, dominated Mosley. And guess what? We're going to give him his due. He beat Mosley from pillar to post. A very old Mosley, but he did beat Mosley pillar to post. Then, after that, he was scheduled to fight Paul Williams. Sadly, Paul Williams got in a car accident. I mean, a motorcycle accident. And barely survived with his life. He's been paralyzed ever since then. Prayers go out to Paul Williams. But instead of Paul Williams, he fought a guy who started his career at lightweight, Josito Lopez. We're going to give him a pass because his original opponent basically was paralyzed from the waist of blow. He fought Josito Lopez, beat him over five rounds, dropped him around two, three, four, and I believe around five. It's been a minute since I watched that fight. I don't know if he dropped him around five for time, but I know he dropped him around two, three, and four. He won the fight, he finished settled. Then he came up against his first true test. His first real live opponent, to be honest. And this is what, his 43rd fight? So many people say, oh, Canelo Alvarez reminds me of the old school fighter. He's fighting, he has basically 60 fights. Bro, do you know who he fought in those 60 fights? His 43rd fight is the first decent opponent. He fought Austin Trout. Austin Trout had just defeated Miguel Cotto for the vacant WBA regular title. So they're fighting for the WBC and the WBA regular title. Not the WBA super. 
that will be a regular. So Austin Trout showed good movement. Canelo Alvarez showed very good head movement. I was very impressed with Canelo Alvarez's head movement. The fight was very close. If you look at the scorecards, you won't think that. Because the scorecards, one of the scorecards actually ha- says by Stanley Christodalo says that Canelo Alvarez won 10 rounds. How? I don't know. I had the fight 6-6, but I gave Canelo the win because he got the knockdown round 7. So it was a very, very, very close fight. But Austin Trout in his very next fight fought a man named Ursland De Lara. Lara dominated Austin Trout. And also dropped him once. And I thought Laura won a shutout against Austin Trout. Just to show you, Canelo struggled while Laura won by shutout. But look, we'll get to Laura when the time comes. After having struggling and barely beating Austin Trout, in many people's eyes, not just my eyes, actually many people claim to this day that Austin Trout beat Canelo Alvarez. But that's not the point. After that, he went on to face one of the greatest of this generation, Floyd Mayweather Jr., at a catch weight of 152 pounds. This fight was unification for the WBC, WBA, Ring Magazine, and Millennial Light Middleweight titles. From the very first round, Canelo looked like an amateur. He lost every second of that fight. Floyd Mayweather Jr. cemented his legacy as one of the greatest of all time by beating a younger and much bigger fighter easily. It wasn't a contest. I had Canelo, I mean, I had Mayweather winning 12 0. And I thought Mayweather could have stopped Canelo if he put uh, more pressure on him late in the fight. Because Canelo was out of it. Go reach the, rewatch the fight. I know it says majority decision, which is criminal. But Mayweather won every second. Like one just had it for Mayweather 9-3. One just had it for Mayweather 8-4. And one judge criminally named C.J. Ross had it at a draw. Where, where Mayweather clearly won every round. Now, after he lost to Mayweather in embarrassing fashion, he had a tune-up fight against Alfredo Angulo. Dominated Alfredo Angulo over 10 rounds. He did not drop Angulo once, but the referee did step in and start the fight after 10. Now, let's get on to his next opponent. Opponent, many people thought he won a fight, so props to Canelo for even taking this fight. He fought Ersline Di Lara. The fight was a very, very boring fight. Uh, it's very hard to watch or rewatch. So, I had watched the fight live. I had Laura winning 8-4. We watched the fight. Like I've watched the fight several times since then. Every time I watch it, I have a different winner. So look, we can make an argument Canelo won that fight, but it was a very boring fight. And most of Canelo's shots, and Laura I landed it by three punches, I believe. But Canelo, all of his shots were to the body. Because Laura did not come to fight that night. Laura came to run. And Canelo is no Gennady Golovkin. Canelo does not know how to cut off the ring. Every time Laura moved, he would just literally follow the guy, not cut the ring off. So that was a big mistake from Canelo. I still think to this day, he does not know how to cut off the ring. But he has not faced movers ever since. So, the, uh, I mean, the judges had a, did not agree that it was a split decision victory for Canelo. Uh, let's move on. His very next fight was a, a man who has not fought in two years named James Kirkland. He went in there, he dropped Kirkland in the first round, dropped him in the second round, I believe, and then dropped him twice in the third, knocking him out brutally in round three. Then he fought his second most notable name, Miguel Cotto. Coming to the fight, I was certain Miguel Cotto would win that fight. Certain. Uh, it was for a dumb reason, and I learned my mistake from that fight. I thought just because Hozo Miguel Cotto... Miguel Cotto's other brother hurt Canelo with a left hook that Miguel Cotto would be able to knock out Canelo with a left hook. I was wrong. I'm shocked that people thought that fight was close. I had money riding on Cotto, and I saw that fight as a very one sided fight for Canelo. I think I had Canelo winning nine rounds. Canelo dominated Cotto, and uh, he picked up the WBC ring magazine and lineal titles. Now let's move on. To the farce that Canelo did after that, after being a superstar, Mayweather just retiring, he's the WBC middleweight champion of the world, 
And there's only one other champion right now. I mean, two other champions at the moment. It was the Billy George Sanders and Andy Lee were about to fight a month later. So, Billy George Sanders would become the champion. But there's another champion who is the unified champion. The WBA Super and IBF champion. His name is Gennady Gennadyevich Golovkin. Most notably known as Triple G. Instead of choosing to fight Golovkin... Canelo Alvarez chose to fight a man who started his career out at lightweight and who was knocked out in the first round at lightweight and who's been knocked out again in the third round by a light welterweight, Amir Khan, at a fight at middleweight. I don't know how that fight was sanctioned to this day. I'm, I'm shocked. That fight was just as bad as Danny Garcia versus Rod Salka. That fight was horrible. That fight was criminal. He knew he was about to knock out. Amir Khan coming into the fight. And that's exactly what happened. Amir Khan ran away for five rounds, landing fast combinations. But at the end, he got caught. It was only a matter of time. Many people said, oh, Khan didn't get caught. He would have won that fight. No, the fuck he won it. Khan was getting killed with everything. Khan did good for the first three rounds. But rounds four and five were, were scary. You thought Khan was about to get killed. And Canelo thought he killed Khan. Go rewatch that fight. Canelo went down on his knees. He thought he killed Khan. Thank God he didn't, but that was a mismatch. That was a farce. And then what did he do in his next move? After he took a very, very easy cherry pick to defend his title, what did he do in his next move? Did he fight Golovkin? Did he fight Belujo Sanders? Did he even fight Lemieux? Did he rematch Cotto? No. He vacated his titles at Menelhoi. He vacated them. Believe it or not, he dropped his titles and went down to light middleweight to fight the pound for pound great, the all-time power puncher, Liam Smith. That's the move that Canelo Alvarez did next. And he stopped Canelo Smith, I mean, uh, he stopped Liam Smith in nine rounds, dropped him around 7 a.m. and knocked him out by body shot around nine. After that, many of you are assuming now Canelo is going to fight Gennady Golovkin. He has to. He's going to grow some balls and fight Gennady Golovkin now. And that's not what happened, folks. He chose to, fo- to find the corpse of Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. and fight him at a catch weight of 164 pounds. So he said the whole time, the problem with the negotiations, he said, I don't want to fight. Golovkin at 160 because I can't make 160. I'm too small. He has to come down to a catch weight of 155. So he can't make 160. He's too small. But he goes up and makes 164 to fight a journeyman in Helio Cesar Chavez Jr. If Chavez Jr. did not have the name Julio Cesar Chavez, he wouldn't get any fights. Believe me, you. He would not get any fights. Leading up to the Chavez Jr. fight, Gennady Golovkin had two fights. He fought Cal Brook, who also moved up from all the way. But at least Cal Brook was undefeated, unlike Amir Khan. But still, that was a cherry pick as well. And the miracle man, Danny Jacobs, which was the third best middleweight behind Golovkin and Canelo. What happened to those two fights? In the Cal Brook fight, Gennady Golovkin was getting hit a lot. And I had Cal Brook winning three of the first four rounds. Even though you could tell watching the fight, it's a matter of time before Golovkin gets to him. You watch the, you, you're watching the fight, you're like, does Cal Brook have a shot? Because he's landing big combinations. But of course, at the end, Golovkin won. But then the Daniel Jacobs fight came around. And Golovkin, in my eyes, got beat pillar to post. I know he dropped Jacobs round four, but I had Jacobs winning eight four, I think, eight rounds to four, or like nine rounds. I don't remember, nine rounds to three, eight rounds to four. I had Jacobs winning comfortably. So if it was eight rounds to four, he would have won 115, 112, even while being knocked down. And there was a clear blueprint how to beat United Golovkin at that point after the Cal Brook and Dan Jacobs. You don't run from him. When you run from him, you get caught. He knows how to cut off the ring beautifully. 
Gennady Golovkin. I used to train boxing. Whenever people ask me, how do I get a guy that's running? I'm like, just watch Golovkin. Yeah, he's the, he's the boxing master at cutting off the ring. Because even when he did drop Jacobs, Jacobs was moving away from Golovkin, and he caught him. But when Jacobs came to him, Golovkin did not know what to do. Golovkin freezes when you throw a combination at him for some reason. So when, after there was a clear blueprint to how to beat Gennady Golovkin, two years later, after winning the WBC title, Canelo Alvarez finally chose to fight Gennady Golovkin. At this point of his career, Canelo Alvarez is only 27, while Gennady Golovkin is in his late 30s. He's 36. And they fight, and in many people's eyes, Gennady Golovkin clearly won the fight. That fight was all a draw. One judge criminally scored the fight 10 rounds to 2 for Canelo. So what happened after that? Many people calling for a rematch. You know, it was a beautiful fight. Golovkin won, Canelo won, it was a beautiful fight. Leading up to the rematch, which was scheduled for May 5, 2018, Canelo Alvarez scandalously fails a drug test. Yeah. Canelo Alvarez was popped for taking steroids. Growth enhancement steroids. The fight on May 5 first Golovkin was canceled. Golovkin moved on to fight Van- Vanius Mortician. And he won via second round. Not, I believe, or third round. I don't know. It's been a minute. And nothing happened to Canelo. He did not get suspended. He did not get fined. He said that this came from some special kind of meat down in Mexico. And the fight versus Golovkin came... In uh, September 16, 2008, I mean September 15, 2018, one year exactly later from the first fight. And watching that fight, you, you could tell Canelo is not the same person that fought last year. This is a bigger man. He looks much older, much more in, in his prime. And in my eyes, I thought Canelo dominated Golovkin in the, in the rematch. Look, I'm going to give Canelo his props. I thought he dominated Golovkin. He beat Golovkin in my eye. And that dominated, but I thought he beat Golovkin clearly. Like, I thought he beat Golovkin 116, 112, 8 to 4. He landed the much, much more beautiful shots. And he had Golovkin magically and astonishingly on the back foot. This is a 37 year old Golovkin, though. Let's not get too hyped up over this victory. This isn't the Golovkin that used to dominate guys like Martin Murray. This isn't the Golovkin that made David Lemieux look like an amateur. This isn't the Golovkin that destroyed Daniel Gill in two rounds. This is a much older Golovkin. This is a much slower Golovkin. This is the same Golovkin that, in my eyes, already lost to Daniel Jacobs. And I thought Daniel Jacobs beat Golovkin clearer clearer than both times we can all fall him. That's what I thought. But what do I know? What do I know, man? And now, let's move on. At this point, Canelo has not yet been rated by most boxing fans or boxing public as the number one pound for pound, clearly. Or, you know, he might be the number one pound for pound because right now, boxing does not have that guy, if you know what I mean. They don't have that Floyd Mayweather. They don't have that Roy Jones Jr. They don't have that Sugar Ray Leonard. They don't have that guy who clearly can dominate any fighter. In his era. They don't have that guy. There's no fighter at the moment. That reminds you of Sugar Ray Leonard. Or Sugar Ray Robinson. So Canelo could possibly be. The number one pound for pound fighter at the moment. But he's not an all time great fighter. He's not a top 10. Top 20 fighter of all time. I have people already put him in the top 10. For doing what? For getting a draw against Gennady Golovkin? For struggling against Lara? For struggling against Trout? Sugar Ray Leonard would have knocked out both Laura and Trout. He would have let them run for 12 rounds. He would have got to them. He's no Sugar Ray Leonard. Stop comparing him to him. 
I saw a post the other day that Canelo at 168 could give Roy Jones Jr. a run for his money at 168. No, the fuck he can't. No, he can't. Roy Jones Jr. would rape Canelo in the ring. Now, let's move on. I'm, I'm getting a bit too hyped up. After the Gennady Golf Marine match, Canelo Alvarez chose to move up to the Super Middleweight Division to fight. Of course, he's going to fight the number one guy, right? Nope, he fought a guy ranked out of the top 10 named Rocky Fielding, who's been stopped in the first round before by Callum Smith. We'll get to Callum Smith in just a moment. He refused to fight Callum Smith, who was at the time the number one Super Middleweight fighter. He went in there against Rocky Fielding. Rocky Fielding got dropped like four times in three rounds. And every time Rocky Fielding got dropped, he was smiling. He was just happy to be there. And he told him, every time he got dropped, he told Ken Alvarez, thank you very much, sir. And then after that, he fought, the, in my eyes, the first man to beat Gennady Golovkin, Danny Jacobs. In my eyes, this is probably Ken Alvarez's best win of his career. And he deserves all the praise for this win. He beat Danny Jacobs over 12 rounds. I had him winning 7 5, 8 4 type fight. But the problem is, Danny Jacobs, just a couple fights later, fought a guy who many of you consider as a journeyman to be Gabriel Rosado. A guy who has 14 losses on his resume. And in my eyes and many fans' eyes, Gabriel Rosado dominated Danny Jacobs. Gabriel Rosado made Danny Jacobs gun shy and won the fight 8-4, more clearer than Canelo in my eyes, but was robbed because he does not name, have the name Canelo Alvarez. Sadly, his name is Gabriel Rosado. If his name was Saul Canelo Alvarez, he would have won that fight. So, and in my eyes and many fans' eyes, Danny Jacobs was coming out for loss. Coming into the Canelo Alvarez fight against Sergei Dervinchenko, a man who Canelo refused to fight. And then his very next fight after fighting Dan Jacobs, Canelo Alvarez moved up to the light heavyweight division to face WBO champion Sergey Kovalev. First of all, Sergey Kovalev was coming off a 10 week, only 10 weeks before he saw his prior fight against the guy who gave him hell, they went war. Kovalev was out on his feet in round 8 and was lucky to get the knockout in round 10. The only reason why I got the knockout was because it was Anthony Yard was completely gassed out. He, he knocked him out with a jab. Nevertheless, there was a rehydration clause. We got to point that out. I think it was 10, oh, no, it was 9 weeks, not even 10 weeks. He went in there, he got Ken Alvarez and brutally knocked out Sugar Kovalev. Props for him for doing that. And then he, he came back to the ring one year later to fight the guy he voted a year prior, Callum Smith. Why did he fight Callum Smith now in 2020 when he refused to fight him in 2018? It's simple, folks. There was a blueprint to how to beat Callum Smith now. A man named John Ryder, also many of you view as a journeyman, dominated Callum Smith. In my eyes, won nine or ten rounds against Callum Smith. And... Use the same style that Canelo uses, except in the southpaw stance. And he easily dominated Calvin Smith. After that, immediately Canelo wanted to fight Calvin Smith. He's like, give me Callum. Give me Callum. I want Callum next. And he beat Callum. I had uh, Canelo Alvarez winning 10 rounds. He dominated Callum. Very smart game plan. Callum Smith came in. He, he reminded me a lot of Julio Cesar Hervis Jr. He just wants to make it to round 12. He had no intention of beating Canelo Alvarez. After that, Canelo Alvarez faced mandatory, uh, mandatory uh, opponent, Evan Yildirim, knocked him out three rounds. Well, didn't knock him out. He quit after three rounds. And there's that. Does this resume remind you of Sugar Ray Leonard? Does this resume remind you of T- Tommy Hearns? Does this resume remind you of Marvin Hankler? If you say yes, you're biased, clearly. I could be biased, but I don't think so, man. I'm a big Canelo fan, but this overhype is driving me crazy. He's not the greatest of all time. He's not an all-time great. If you say he's a Hall of Famer, I'll say, of course. If you say he's a great fighter, I'll say, of course. But to say he's top 10 is criminal. Now, I, I 
think Billy Joe Sanders will prove my words right. He will prove that Canelo Alvarez does not know how to fight fighters on the back foot. We will see. Even though I would have loved Canelo to fight Billy Joe Sanders at 160, because Billy Joe Sanders was much better and much quicker at 160. I hope Billy Joe Sanders does not come in at 168. I hope he comes in at 164 or 165. That will be a big difference. For a guy who likes to move a lot around the ring, those two, three pounds make a big difference for him. And yeah, Sadiq Boxing out. Like and subscribe. That's it, folks.